Hello everyone and welcome to Hashihime of the Old Book Town, just released today on MangaGamer.com and Steam. This product was provided to me by them, so thanks for that. This is the Steam version, if you couldn't tell from the pop-up at the start. I tried to figure out how to turn it off, but it doesn't work. And using game capture on uh, OBS doesn't work. It makes the screen, the game like has this weird shaking effect whenever I'm recording it, so I have to use window capture, which is not ideal. So let's go to config here. Oh gosh, no. Spoilers. Anti-aliasing for a visual novel. Interesting. So what this is, this is a boys love visual novel. So that may turn a lot of you off right away, but that's okay. It's not for everybody. But, and that'll be done just a bit. But this is an award winning, this game actually won awards. Back in, I think, uh, this game's pretty old. Um, like they've been translating it and edited forever it seems like so i'm finally glad it just came out but what this is it's a murder mystery game yeah murder mystery let's check the extras which we probably don't have any how many movies are there i don't know if each one of those is a movie i doubt it that'd be a lot of movies but this was made by the developer a delta and as far as i know they haven't made anything else other than this this is like kind of like an indie game in a way so let's just start. Let's just get right into it. I love the soundtrack and like the setting is really cool. You'll you'll, you'll see when we get there. Team unlocked. According to the man. The phantom lived in the basement. Night after night he would kidnap someone, tie them to a cold chair, and tell them his questionable life story until the break of dawn spoke without passion or emotion spoke about himself as if speaking to someone else speaking of someone else if i had to complain about one thing it would be how cold the chair was my second complaint was that the man's story was boring and my third was that the man seemed to want my final opinion on it why would you want something like that because I'm the Phantom. Until a moment ago, I should have been looking out at the Shidomi River from Shin Bridge. As soon as I realized I had been kidnapped, I started to understand why the chair was so cold. You get it now? He asked. But before I offered my opinion, I had one question. When will the morning come? Once I'm dawn. Once I'm dawn. Interesting. Once I'm okay. That wasn't a, that wasn't an error. Okay. Once I'm dawn. 
If the phantom said it was night, it would become night. If he said it was morning, it would become morning. But once he did, it was no longer Japan. Nor is it another world. It was a so-called world of illusions, with its own concept of time that the phantom controlled. This story begins with me, and the snazzy music playing at this nice diner. A man harboring obscure anxieties about the transient world, being detained by a curious and grotesque monster. The miserable and beautiful story about me finally clinging to life when faced with the genuine god of death. At least, should have been. When he finished turning the last page, he tapped the now bare table with his middle finger. He seemed to be demanding something or searching for something. It cut into the gramophone's brisk melody. At any rate, I could tell the behavior was out of disgust. What is this? Without thinking, I boarded out the same thing. Hmm. I had expected his voice to be more full of praise and admiration. His reaction was somehow different than I, from what I had imagined. Maybe I had given him the wrong manuscript. Well, that's happened before. Thinking that that couldn't be possible, I took a peek. And no matter how many times I looked at it over, though, it was the story that I'd written. The Phantom in the Basement. Hang on, let me... Wait, I'm sorry, hang on. No, no I, I want to access the settings. Voices are as high as they can go. They sound a little muffled. Maybe it's just me. Oh well. I can't really fix it though. It's as high as they go. Kawase blew out the tobacco smoke he was holding in. An indescribable smile was waiting for me beyond the haze I parted. Yeah, dude, if you're gonna sit here and insult my work, then. Kawase pulled the manuscript towards himself and looked it over again. He traced over the last lines with his pinky finger over and over again in disgust. When will the morning come, once I'm done? It's a pun? Oh! <laughs> I'm an idiot. <laughs> Oops, how rude of me. I should have picked up on it. I don't know, like, if it's meant to be a funny story? Because, like, if it's meant to be kind of a semi serious story, like, having a pun as, like, your final thing, I don't know, I don't know if that would. That kind of cheapens the whole experience, in my opinion. The cigarette sprung like a shishi odoshi and scattered ash all over the page. Water filled bamboo tube that clacks on a stone when empty. Ah. As if that weren't enough, he snubbed the flame out of my on my manuscript. The flame burned through several pages before the smother, smoldering sound stopped. He tilted his head in confusion when I immediately gathered up the manuscript pages. <laughs> the story's trap, man. Is it, you really care about it that much? Oh, it's one chapter. An impressive hole appears right through the middle of the manuscript. When I glared at him through that small people, I would say pulled out his wallet in annoyance. That's not the problem. That's not the problem, Kawase, you know it. He was like an old man flashing a mouthful of gold teeth. Even if you rebuild the crumbling enamel with gold and silver, there's still not the teeth you had to begin with. And yet, I wasn't such an ogre that I wouldn't take his feelings into consideration and try to settle things out of court, so to speak. Suddenly. Three yen? Oh, come on, that's a, a little sheep. I know this is back in the day. Okay, that's a lot of money, apparently. He was insulted. What a thoroughly evil man. Thoroughly. 
He was a devil, and he most likely had no idea what sort of feelings I had put into this manuscript. He couldn't imagine just how much planning, 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 and more planning I put into each page with my hands, eyes, and my heart. I faked a cough and let out a sigh. It wasn't as if I had no talent. There was no way I had no skill whatsoever, that's just silly. It was all Kawase's fault. It was an unfeeling, unemotional prick. Devil. Oh yeah, just so you know, this game is uncensored on Steam. It has, it has naughty parts, I assume. I haven't seen any of them. At least on the store page there wasn't any, so I don't know what's what's to be expected. So, you know, just, just know that going in. An eye for beauty. That's, you know what, I wasn't too hot on the story either, it's okay. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, I mean, he's a bit plain, sure, but boring? I don't know. This was the fourth time I had asked Kawase for a critique. Four times. The first time, when I was nervous, he crumpled it up. And the second time, when I was hopeful, he sent it flowing away on the river. Why he did that, I don't know. And the third time, when I was fully prepared, he turned it into a paper airplane and sent it flying away from the sky. So this time, I made sure we weren't anywhere he could make paper airplanes or near rivers. And then he burned a hole through it. He didn't like the story. You know, not everyone's not gonna like the story that you write. That's just, you know, common sense. But to be fair, he's not really giving us any kind of, you know, constructive criticism here. Like, what's, what's bad? You know, what's not? You know, what can we improve on? What exactly are you trying to say with that deadpan voice? Things like that could make me flare up at him again and again. But unable to find the right words for a comeback, I swallowed my feelings. I was the one who had asked the guy like this for critiques. I was the one who had brought it up, so there was absolutely no way I could back down. Kawase said, tapping his wallet. Don't disappoint me or I'll burn it again. What an utterly vile man. Kawase lit his last match as he held a cigarette in his smirking mouth. But perhaps my curses had worked, because it wouldn't lie. Ha. In the end, the head of the match broke off and rolled tragically away. Kawase commented on the weather as he tossed the matchbox away. The thin glass distorted the sky, making me worry even more about getting back. I felt as though the sound of the rain tapping against the window was telling me to hurry on home. Which one of us was being obnoxious now? It wasn't me. I gathered up the remaining pages Kawase had read and discarded, then glared at him. Kawase brought his coffee to his now lonely lips, the corners of his eye crinkling as he smiled crudely. One day. One day, one of my stories will hit you so hard you'll look positively drunk. When I thought that, I cracked a smile as well. We'll get to him. お前こそ時間は明日の昼君の家だ。ああ、来たれ来たれ。俺から逃げ出そうなんて思うなよ。当たり前だ。お前も意地を張らず、そろそろ素直になって。お。
What? Soon, our minor argument was suddenly drowned out by a deep rumbling, along with an eerie sound that seemed to be speeding right at us. The ground shook violently. I was immediately thrown to the floor. Waitresses screamed. Plates broke. The window panes cracked. Kawase spat out his coffee. The moment I was flung from my seat, my manuscripts scattered all over the place again. The earthquake? What had just happened? The roar grew distant, and the shaking gradually subsided. One page fell from my manuscript gently covered the top of my head. When I removed it and looked up at the ceiling, the chandelier, which was spinning around and around, made me dizzy. The guests and waitresses fell silent. They all had the same look on their faces. Only the gramophone sang its jazz like it was completely unaware. It was an earthquake, okay. So, earthquake. Kawase looked down at his chest in grief for his uniform, which was damp with coffee. It wasn't all that bad, he could just wipe it off and let it dry on its own, but Kawase clicked his tongue dramatically. This uniform had one day to retirement. Oh, oh, shots fired. I mean, it doesn't help that they dress the part, right? It doesn't hurt, I meant to say. <laughs> Yeah, we don't want that. Not only that, I Feeling as though I should back off from Kerose in his pissy mood, I once again began to gather up my manuscript again. Everyone in the earthquake shaking cafe had calmed down and began to move. Everyone, that was. What? Oh, the, <laughs> the coffee stain. Except for Kawase. <laughs> Just in case, I cleaned my glasses and took another look, but I really couldn't understand what he was so upset about. Could black clothes be stained even blacker than they were to begin with? I guess his fussiness really was some kind of disorder. Even I wasn't stupid enough to fan the flames by trying to understand his pain. As I started to quickly try to wrap things up here, waitress made her way towards us. She's a cutie. Did I say? Oh crap, no I What's the, uh, what's the button? Backlog. Oh, how do you access the, uh... I will figure it out. What? Oh, that's not necessary. She bowed, and then fell on her knees began to eagerly wipe off Kawase's uniform. The pink hanker chief turned a faint coffee brown. I could guess why she was doing this. Then the actual person she was doing it to must have realized the waitress's feelings for him already. I wondered what Kyose would do. Oh, well, it was pointless either way. That waitress has the hots for him. Oh, there was a red flower blooming on it. Pretty. Imperial University's clothes. Oh shit, dude. What? Why would you say that? That's like the worst thing you could say to somebody. Dude, what's your deal, man? 
話は嘘です。私が。This guy's a d i c k great A. How cunning. It was like she knew she could attach some kind of sentimental value to a simple handkerchief. Just by starting off with, it's my grandmother's. However, that only infuriated Kawase even more. Oh shit, dude. He poured his remaining coffee over the waitress's head, trembled, and let out a delayed yelp. Dude. ですか見てわかんないよコーヒーがこぼれたんだこの店の耐震が甘いせいだよおかわりくらい黙って提供してほしいねウェイトレス was dumbfounded by his stone cold eyes probably never thought the person she admired would ever treat her this way Normally, I would have kept quiet and ignored them, but today I found my eyes wandering nervously. Like, come on, like, you're just gonna stand there and let some guy be a dick to this woman? Kawase said, grabbing the waitress's hair and turning her ear toward him. Naturally, everyone in the cafe was focusing their gaze on us. The other waitresses were paralyzed with fear in the back, and even the timid chef made a rare appearance. Ah, what a mess. I like this cafe's food, too. Now, it just would be awkward to come here. <laughs> the waitress should have been in shock, but her eyes were sparkling. Oh, God. Kawase let go of her hair, she went up to grab him another coffee with quite the spring in her step. When she regrouped the other waitresses, they went back to their lively chatter. She pressed the handkerchief Kawase touched to her nose and ended up sharing its smell with the other servers. Oh gosh. Three left? Excuse me? You're making the rounds here? This is a Denny's, not a whorehouse. Dude, you poured coffee on her. That's your own doing. Yeah, right? You're really the sun? Not that they were gonna treat me like shit. Sorry. He shouldn't be able to get away with his obvious tyranny. If he'd been a politician, he would have been the target of scrutiny. If he'd been a soldier, he would have been called a rebel. Kawase was forgiven. That must have been the luck he was born with. But what annoyed me even more, <laughs> as if that were possible, was that he himself did not seem to derive any joy from his own selfishness. You know, it didn't make him happy. He was just selfish to be selfish. Noticing my unamused gaze, the malicious smile returned to Kawase's face. I remember my, 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 uh, I remembered my manuscript, gathered it up, and typed it against the table to straighten it out. Kawase's terrible mood was improving. Perhaps he was finally giving up on his uniform. Oh yeah, the bookstore. It's in the title of the game. What? You don't read? Yeah, like what's that supposed to mean? Yeah, you know, I, I'm I'm starting to think that we're never going to have a story that will ever satisfy this guy ever. A damn wannabe editor. Look at all these places. You know, that's such a good. I, you know, I really love the artwork. It, it's so like. It's simple, but it looks nice. You know, it's like a simple but complex feeling. It just, I just really love this style. It looks really good. 
Two years ago, we came to the capital from the countryside of Aizu. Kawasai and I have been together for as long as I can remember. So he was something like, you know, a childhood friend, I guess. Long ago, we would often play by the mountain stream. We'd fish, catch bugs, and laugh together. You know, that old chestnut. I mean, okay, I say laugh together, but Kawasai had that same finicky personality even back then. So he wouldn't touch the fish he caught and let all the bugs he kept die. Anyway, he was, a, he was a fussy man, let's just put it that way. That's why what I thought was fun and what he thought was fun are probably completely different. People were genuinely shocked whenever I talked about our relationship. You know, they joked, friends today, enemies tomorrow. For better or worse, he and I were complete opposites. Unlike me, Kawase was flexible, unique, special, a genius. My writing, like the piece from earlier, had the power to captivate people. And yet Kawase's true nature, like what he's shown to the waitress and me, pitch black. The reason we couldn't hurl our insults at each other and still hang out together could be summed up in a few words. We were childhood friends. The streetcar, which was running a little behind schedule, finally came. Suddenly pushed in, I was forced to stand in the corner of a car. The rain was coming down hard now, making the midday sky dim. It was a cold rain. I wondered how long this year's rainy season would be. Someone once, someone once said, instead of asking the rain in the sky, ask the cat. Well, cats, animals. Speaking of animals, how's Kawase doing? Streetcar went from Kanda Bridge to Junbichu via the Nishikichu Riverside. A smoky fragrance gently wafted by when I jumped from the streetcar. It was a unique atmosphere that drifted through the old book town of Jinbucho. Oh, man, streetcars need to be a thing again. Are they a thing still? Like San Francisco? I'm pretty, 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 pretty sure that they have some. Used bookstores here and there were closing up their shops because of the rain. <clears throat> Customers were driven out in groups. Shopkeepers were indifferent to them only during times like this. Customers without umbrellas had no choice but to find a place for cover under, other than under the eaves. Overflowing with size, they ran through the old book town. I was in a hurry, but not because I wanted to get out of the rain. There was a reason I needed to get back to the shop right away. I love this music. Isn't this music amazing? Yes, it is. The shop was called Mibachido. Located on the outskirts of the old book town, it was an iron building that, at first glance, didn't appear to be a used bookstore. It was a mysterious building that looked more like a nobleman's storehouse or a bank's treasury. I leaned my umbrella against my shoulder and opened the doors using both hands in an abundance of force. We only opened up shop during gloomy, rainy weather like this. We only opened up shop. Interesting. Why? You know, I think, like, in a nice, rainy... You know, like a rainy day, it'd be good to just sit in like a bookstore and just read a book or something, like chilling out, or like a cafe or something. Like, I don't know. That's that's so that's so so good. Like those are the, those are the little moments that you know make life worth living. I think. Hi. The shopkeeper gave me a small nod from behind the soji. What's a soji? Soji is a countertop. It means countertop in Japan. It's a paper screen door. I'm completely wrong. He coughed a few times and seemed to be turning over in his bed. Shopkeeper said he suffered from an illness. Didn't tell me which one, but he did. That's why, in an effort to be as considerate as possible, I kept myself from hurrying as I headed up the second floor. I burst into my room, stumbled, walked over to the futon I never put away, and I jumped toward the fish bowl. We gotta feed the fish. It's very important you take care of your animals. And the bowl was a goldfish swimming around in a huff. I looked down at him and he looked up at me with those derby eyes and I felt like I could finally breathe. Oh, thank goodness. The animal I'd remembered on the streetcar, because we talked about cats, was this guy. I've been worried the earthquake earlier might have- oh yeah, the earthquake. It might have frightened him. But it didn't look like any water spilled out. The bull hadn't even moved. That's awesome. We got an earthquake proof this time. Apparently, Umi Bachido didn't look stir- didn't just look sturdy. The water was cloudy. I guess I'd been so engrossed with my manuscript over the past three days and nights that I hadn't even thought about cleaning out his bowl. 
This won't do. I thought as I grasped the goldfish tightly in my hand and scooped it out of the dirty water. Goldfish writhed, gasping for air. I know you're suffering, but please hang in there. You know, at some point this goldfish is going to die and it's going to be sad as hell. I threw the dirty water out the window. Hopefully there was no one underneath me. And tossed the goldfish into the now empty bowl. You'll have to suffer for just a little longer. I felt around the rain gutter above my head and pulled out the cork plug. As soon as I did, the rain that had fallen from the roof into the gutter drained into the fishbowl. Because, you know, that water isn't dirty at all. Freed from gravity, the goldfish swam around peacefully. Plugged the rain gutter back up and was filled with the happiness that seemed my now content goldfish. Mm -hmm. Shadow suddenly flickered beneath the fishbowl. When I moved the bowl, I saw a red umbrella looking up at me in shock. Oops. There really was someone underneath me. Minakami. Who's this guy? Friend of ours, probably. おかげでほとんど濡れずに済んだ。そ、そうか。どうした?なんだか元気がないな。いや、その金魚を素手で掴むなよ。でも可哀想だ。あ、いっぱいバッフォーズフィッシュ。あ、いっぱいバッフォー
is anything really random. If I finally stood up, grabbed the books from his hand, and shoved them onto the shelf. Oh man. This is the murder mystery game, right? Maybe I'm thinking of another game. I mean, I got so many games. So many games on the mind. Maybe I'm thinking of a... This has to be the game, though. I'm pretty sure this is... I pulled out Kurosaku's Double Heart. A mystery novel about a play used to expose a murderer. Really? A play that used to expose a... That, how does that work? Oh, well. Maybe we should read it sometime. Or we should read it? You should read it. Maybe I'll read it eventually. Which Minakami had just put back and went to return it to the top shelf, or at least try tried to. But no matter how much they jumped, I, I'm too short. I couldn't reach it. Minakami nudged his spine with his hand and pushed it up into the back of the shelf. Thank you. All five books he had given to me went onto the bottom shelf, but before I could glare at him and tell him not to make fun of me, he looked back up. I reluctantly got on my knees and put away the books, following his lead. <laughs> Oh no, like 15? 20 books? Well, if they're not that long, then I guess. What do you read day and night? Is that all you do, man? I haven't read that many books this year. Yeah, 20 books in 3 days, that's, that's crazy. Although I remember back in the day, I used to read Goosebumps books pretty fast because they were pretty short. Oh man, I love those books. Those were good. So cool. You, you've read all of these books? Don't tell me that. Probably. Oh god. Once Minakami had finished returning all 20 books he'd borrowed, he bent back and looked along the shelves. Then he let out a distant sigh full of sense of accomplishment. We have 4,000 books, man. That's still a lot of books. I don't know, there's still a thousand books you haven't read. I mean, can we ever actually stop reading things? You'd be long dead before you ran out of stuff to read in this world. Minakami was an abnormally avid reader. If there was a story he hadn't read, it was like he couldn't relax until he had the book. Even though I said he couldn't relax, it wasn't like he would fly into a frenzy or anything like that. He's pretty chill. He found a story he didn't know. He would gently take it in his hands, head to the register, and pay. Then he'd sell it back once he was done reading it. That was all. First class, he seemed to be a casual reader, but reading every book in the Imperial University's library was definitely abnormal. Oh my god, dude. Dude, dude, you did not want to open up that can of worms, let me tell you. It went. Alright. That's the thing, he was so obtuse about everything. Minakami looked thoroughly confused. Unable to bear seeing his face like that, I immediately averted my gaze. He didn't think there was such a thing as a poor piece of literature writing. <laughs> yeah, there certainly is such a thing. Although, you know what? You could say that there never really is, because it's like, well, it's the authors. They want to tell a story. You know, it may not be the best story. It may be full of errors, you know, grammatical errors, spelling, typos. Maybe the story just doesn't make sense. But, you know, they put pen to paper and they made something. They want to tell you a story, and that's that's more than a lot of people ever do. So you know what? I, you know what? I, I kind of maybe I'm with them. There was there's never such a thing as a poor piece of literature. You may not like it, but I don't think it's ever a bad thing. That's why he wouldn't hold back with his praise for me. Honestly, when I realized that, I'd wondered if it was really okay to find comfort in the ambiguity, and I realized I'd been asking that brute Kawase for his critiques. When I ask him for his his critiques, he seems like he's he's better than you know. Will give us an answer. Kawase was the whip. Minakami was candy. He was a candy sweeter than Kalspi, a milky, uncarbonated soft drink known for its polka dot packaging that represents the Milky Way. What my wounded ego needed right now is that sweet candy named Minakami. 
カワセが梅鉢堂に来ることになってるだからお前も来いそしてカワセに行って聞かせるのだ行って聞かせる何をだ私の輝かざる才能についてだお前が言えばやつもう少しは私を見返すかもしれない。明日の昼は講義があって。ああ、no. so、really? 私の言うことが聞けないのか You're not gonna do what I say? What kind of friend are you? 嫌に必死だな。コーヒーの言うことが聞けないのか。No, there's no. Oh, I'll swing by if I have time. No, none of that. <laughs> you, yeah, you will come, okay? I want your word. I wasn't in a tizzy at all. I just. Well, I'm like. I'm not going to die. What is this? What is this? Minakami said as he handed me the last book left in his hand. Wondering what it was, I took a look at the cover. It was Kyusaku's Umeno's Dogra Magra. Oh no! I wanted to click on it! Hang on, hang on. Shut up, okay. Overwrite、oh, right, now. Okay, we're gonna go back to the title. We're gonna see. We're gonna see what it said. Sorry to do this to you. Extra. Under extra items? No? Is it under gallery? There's gotta be a way to see. What? Oh my god, there's a lot of CGs. How do we see the thing? How do we see the gallery? What? Pop up encyclopedia. It's a pop up encyclopedia. We can't see it anytime. That sucks. Dang it. That's a bit annoying. I'm not gonna lie. I don't like that. m i s e n o s h o h i n o Karipanashi j a w a r i k a r a n Yomi o t a r a s h o h i n t o s h e n a r a b e t e k r i t e k a m a n i The system buttons. In Sakura Karax. Takone o t s k e t o i n j a n e k a Dang it. Oh well. I don't want it. We're gonna deny a book. What? That's kind of a cool way to put it. I don't need to see what someone else thought was a good story. So, that really is too bad, you know? You're so blinded with making your own story, you don't want to see other people's successes. <laughs> What? Why? Oh, he's gonna put it there anyway. You calmly put it on the shelf right in front of me. I was so irritable today, I couldn't even get through a mini commie's little joke. I went back to the register and summed over so far that it ended up lying across the counter. I saw a single piece of paper flutter down from my slanted point of view. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde was written on in bold print. Now that's a good story. That's a good story. I peeled it off the desk, lifting it high above my head out of reflex. <laughs> Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde was a horror film. The main characters were named well, Dr. Jekyll and his other personality, Hyde. It showed at the Nikatsu Theater in Kanda last spring, but I had missed its run, and well, now it was here. Founded in 1912, Japan's oldest major film studio and theater chain, Katsu, short for Nippon Katsudo Shashin, or Japan Motion Picture. I couldn't believe Tuyu Cinema was rerunning it. The movie theater that opened in 1921 in Jinbucho, after it was destroyed by the Great Kanto Earthquake, was rebuilt and reopened, surviving the air raids of World War II. It stayed in business until it closed down in 1970. The building was demolished in 1992. That's, that's a shame. I checked the date and time. It would be playing tomorrow afternoon. It didn't seem to be some sort of cruel joke either. Of course not. Women and children are too stupid to understand. I understand the time period this was in. Was, you know, women were still very inferior in terms of men. 
I have no reason not to go. Oh, don't we have to stay at the bookstore? I thrust the ticket deep into my sleeve. Minakami was shocked by how enthusiastic I had made up my mind. We had she meant it's a date. We just smiled and nodded. <laughs> well, we already saw to you, Cinema. Well. Minakami folded his cloth and stuffed it in his bag, then put on his still damp mantle. You're leaving already? Old friend, huh? Yeah, it's like someone I know? Oh, can we meet him? We were old friends, so... Didn't that mean they were just normal acquaintances, or...? I mean, Akami would say nothing more about it, so I just stopped pressing him. You're trying to show off again. I wasn't sure if you heard my grumbling, but he opened his umbrella and smiled even wider. That has nothing to do with this. I was going to throw out my usual comeback, but instantly fell silent. As if he's seen through it, Minakami furrowed his brows, but immediately hid behind the edge of his umbrella. Then, like a falling leaf, he swiftly passed me and disappeared. Minakami was gone. All that remained was the sound of the rain. Still, he always left a strange, lingering presence. Maybe he himself didn't realize how unusual it felt, but it must have been something only I really noticed. Inakami never said goodbye. His departures were always vague. You know, made me think he would suddenly show up again if I called out his name or something. I was probably the only one who noticed that. But... Keep up with my studies, huh? I rested my cheek against the counter again and flipped through a reference book Minakami had given me. It had been two years just looking at the old reference book when we realized that the time had gone by in a blink of an eye. I mentioned it before, but Kawase, Minakami, and I had come to the capital two years ago. To say the capital had the finest educational institute in Japan wouldn't have been an exaggeration, and we came to take the Imperial University's entrance exam. I had studied for it. Even though I sometimes read fantasy novels and went to the movies, I had studied ever so diligently all the time. But a year later, only Kawase and Minakami were accepted to the Imperial University. Since I didn't think any of us would actually pass, I never dreamed I would be the only one to fail. At the time, Minakami and I were under care of a philanthropist named Oz Ozumi. He was a widow who acted as if she didn't expect anything from us country bumpkins. Think as long as you like, she said. I had been moved by her words. But when it came to me, the only one who didn't pass, she looked at me with a blank in disgust. Two years had gone by, and then this year she'd given me final notice to vacate, and she kicked me out of her house. She told me to be grateful as she provided me with meals and a place to sleep. I'm like, I cared. If you're going to act like a virtuous person, see you through to the end. I provided food and a home for my goldfish, but I didn't feel any bitterness toward him. He's a goldfish. I don't have expectations for goldfish. In fact, I wanted him to ask more of me. I was much more noble than she was. And the shopkeeper of Umib <coughs> Umbachido was even more noble. You got it, boss. I heard the back door open. His footsteps and muffled coughs melted into the sound of the rain. A weird time to take a walk. It only been a month ago, I'd been driven out of the Oizumi house. I, I mean, I, I fled from her home. Rain like... We were having a day beating down on me. I had no money. No shelter. What had awaited me in the drizzle was Umibichao's large front doors. To get out of the rain, I pretended to look for books. When I had let out a gloomy sigh that the shopkeeper had spoken to me from the back of the store. I was like a broken record that day. I tried to say something, but I couldn't answer. My voice just cracked. It was the only sound that I could get out. The shopkeeper, with his calm voice full of understanding, had fixed the needle on my record and made me play it all out. He listened to how I'd fled from my previous lodgings to how I had eaten anything for half a day or to how I'd been more than a day since I bathed. And once he was done listening, he offered me a deal. If I ran the shop, he would rent out the room on the second floor to me. The shop was closed when it was sunny. He said he wanted me to open and run the shop only on rainy days. Every morning he would leave enough money for my meals for the day by the register. 
That was the only material exchange between us. That's right. Never seen the shop's owner. Not even once. What do you mean you never seen the shop's owner? Didn't he talk to us? Whatever. I went back to leaning my face against my hand and watching the scenery blurred by the rain outside. I was bored. This sucks. Not really bored. I just couldn't muster any strength into my sluggish body. You know, we've had those days. But I urged myself on, grabbed a feather duster, and wandered around the shop. Suddenly, I felt like I saw Kavase through the bookshelves. It was definitely the image of him at the moment he dug a cigarette into my manuscript. Then, clear as day, I saw Kavase's vulgar smile. Apparently, I really was having a hard time dealing with his harsh criticism. I looked away from that moment and plopped onto the floor. It was annoying. Way too annoying. Now, maybe it would have been better if a complete stranger had said that to me, but I have to keep facing him tomorrow and the day after. There's no way I could run from him now. I was the one who had asked for his critique, after all. As a writer, all I could do was continue spewing out stories. Writer. I mean, what sort of writer was I? I couldn't even satisfy a single person. How was they holding me back was the reason I never considered taking anything to a publisher. There was probably nothing I could create that would ever captivate him. I'd probably never be able to write anything that would make that guy smile and tell me I'd done a good job. I set my glasses on top of my head and used the palms of my hands to rub my closed eyes. Stars scattered behind my eyelids in unusual, sparkling patterns formed. When I opened my eyes, the area transformed into a strange blue dimension. When I happened to look forward, I found this guy standing in the rain. Drops dramatically bounced off the leaf he was using as an umbrella. He seemed to be slowly thinking something over in his head while he held his breath in his stomach. It was as if he made his mind about something. Oh, what? That was all the frog said. What, the frog can't read a book? What? By the way, this kind of thing happened to me quite often. I'd had the ability to see strange things for a long time. Except this wasn't anything supernatural, it was an illusion produced by my subconscious. Honestly, there was a part of me that was a little disappointed this hallucination was only a frog. If this form had been more grotesque, this scene would have been much more dramatic. Just give the frog his books, please. What? Yeah, that wasn't so bad. It was strange. No matter how poor my creations may have been in the moment, they seemed brilliant. When I'd asked Kawase about this, that phenomenon, he called it narcissism derived from arrogance. It was definitely arrogance. It's the stupid eyes, the short legs, that nervously trembling body. I was starting to find the hallucinations somewhat amusing. Suddenly, I was no longer myself. The main character was... Right. The owner of a used bookstore by all appearances, but he was secretly a medium. Hmm. It was a setup that made me think of a certain someone, but whatever. The main character should be refined, composed, and wear glasses that made him look like an intellect. Kind of like yours truly. But then he would shockingly use a hickish word like ain't, like yours truly. Order. Frogman's eyes opened wide when he looked over Hariko, Hariko the shopkeeper. Taking a direct hit, he sank into the opposite wall. Just wanted some books, darn it. 
君にジンゴが読めるかね読めないから読むんですそうして学んで僕も人間になってあの人間にあの人間とは What the hell happened? The tears the frogman cried turned into nourishment and replenished the moisture in his body. Pop! He rolled off the wall and took the defensive, turning his eyes tinged with rage toward Haruhika. The frogman skillfully manipulated his tongue and began to push books off the shelves, one by one. Haruhika's attacks and blocks were in vain as the tongue suddenly pierced through a bookcase. Books rained down from the falling bookcase. However, the decision Haruhiko made in that very instant was even more surprising. God, the artwork is so damn good. How can you not say this is good? Uh, uh, no. Who's that? When I suddenly snapped out of it, I was lying on the floor grasping a pen. For me, it was a manuscript. I was in the middle of writing. Perhaps because I was writing before the ink could dry, there were several letters smudged to the left. Apparently, I'd been a little overzealous. I counted the scattered manuscript pages as I gathered them up, but I was missing the first page. When I happened to turn around, a man was looking down at me, concerned. Some. Da. Daijobu. Deska. Eh. Daijobu. Des. Watashiwa. Buji. Des. Buji? Ano. Kore. Ashimoto. Ni. This is not the voice I pictured for this guy. He was still standing there. What do you want? He jumped back and put some distance between us. He looked at me and scratched his eye patch as if he were embarrassed. Once I got a better look, I recognized him. He was a customer who always came in the evening. That meant that half of the day had already passed. Oh, I let out a directionless sigh. The man seemed to misunderstand and jumped a bit. How did you know? Jeez, Langway, you got a problem with me being a writer? Did you? Did you like it? すみません。それでこの私に何をですか？え、ここ、これをお会計してもらいたくて。You want to buy my manuscript? Oh, oh, the book, the dog Romagra, a murder mystery about a young man with amnesia locked up in an insane asylum. The words "dog Romagra" are nonsense. Corner meant to emulate the babbling of a baby. Oh. I bet that's really good. That's gotta be bad if you have amnesia and you're in an asylum. Oh man. Damn you to call me. It ended up shoving it on the bookshelf after all. But that it was a good thing you did so we could figure out what the book was. I don't need money for that. That's not one of our products. Dude, we're giving it to you. If you want it, shut up and take it. What an overly dramatic guy. Must be a playwright. He continued to stand there, nervously wringing his hands and biting his lip. He slipped past him and returned to the register. He looked at me as if he still had something to say. What do you want, dude? Store's closing at six, dude. You, you either buy something or you get out. Trade? What do you mean, trade? So that's what he decided to say. I slowly opened his bag and pulled out some sort of goldfish watering can made of tin. Didn't expect him to place it by the register with a clunk. Huh? What the hell was this? A toy? Not to the point where you carry them around though, right? Nah, it's fine. I don't know what 
ごめんなさい。気持ち悪くてごめんなさい。It was, it was creepy. What I was thinking must have gone through to him. Once he calmed down, his face turned red and he ran out of Uma Bichido. The only ones left were me and the goldfish watering can. My buddy and me achievement. Wow. What was that about? I let out a sigh as I looked into the goldfish's pretty eyes. The sigh, though, was unrelated. What a weirdo. Anyway, I managed to finish a short story about a heroic battle unfolding between a used bookstore owner and a yokai. I know, yokai means like a ghost. Spirits, monsters, and demons of Japanese folklore. Yeah, all those hours playing yokai watch were, were not. I gathered the bulky manuscript and looking it over fondly. But for some reason, my face began to fall as I turned each page. Man, this story sucks. It suddenly seemed boring. Figured Minakami would definitely enjoy it. He, he enjoys everything. His tastes were so closer to my own, but I mostly wondered how Kawase would feel. Yeah, I think I should probably not show this to Kawase. I turned the manuscript over and put the ink bottle on top as a weight. Something like a gut feeling. For some reason, I suddenly cooled forever and made my heart feel as though it were crumbling to pieces. I wondered why. This was the first time I'd ever felt this way. At that moment, the cuckoo clock sleepily struck six. It was closing time. The rain was coming down even harder, and it was so cold I wondered if it would turn into snow. Chasing out the sound of the rain, I closed the doors, then looked around the shop once more. In the end, the only customer today had been that man with the eye patch. Huh, business is not booming. But he hadn't really bought anything, so I had no money to turn over to the shopkeeper. Actually, I never earned more money than what the shopkeeper gave me for food. So I wonder, where does he get his money? That was another reason that Umiba Shadow was a mysterious shop. Where, where's the money coming from? No one's buying anything here. You did? When? I'm back. Get away, it's dangerous here. Yeah, something like that. Weird. We never so we never see this guy. He's just like always behind like the, the you know the door. The light clipped off. That is kind of strange. Uh, we'll try not to. As far as I could remember, the shopkeeper had never pressed me about money. Not even once. In short, this place was a heaven to an unscrupulous person such as myself. And look at all those places we could go to. That's amazing. Even though it was only 6 o'clock, the sky was totally dark thanks to the rainy weather. Everyone was deep under their umbrellas. I was freezing my butt off under my black mantle. I should have at least worn long sleeves, but I ended up foolishly picking out a short sleeve dress shirt, though I was freezing. People who were weak to the cold were gathered at, oh god, Sarugakucho's Ga Kikai Bathhouse. Sarugakucho's? The old men passing me were by smelled unseasonably of yuzu. I think yuzu is some kind of alcoholic beverage. Once I'd gone through the dressing room into the baths, the place was filled with nothing but old and middle-aged men. We don't have to see them. God. What looked like an old woman's head bobbed among them. I took my place in the middle as I watched the old woman's head sway. Speaking of old women... Keep up with your studies, but the grandmother you left down the country. I recalled Mikami's words. A little late, but here's some background on myself. My father and mother died when I was young. Tragic. Right before I was born, my father was attacked by a bear and died very tragic. Then when I was young, my mother disappeared from our village. Tragic. After that, I had lived with my grandfather and grandmother, just the three of us. But last year, one of my grandfather had passed away. Oh. My grandmother was my only blood relative left on this earth. I felt like my grandmother and I were connected by some sort of spiritual power or something. 
If there was anything I wanted to eat or anything I desired, she knew exactly what it was and gave it to me right away. We were connected. Well, okay, maybe not quite. The connection was only a one-way thing. I knew nothing about her. Even now, I feel like my grandmother was watching me from somewhere. The old woman turned around. It was an old man. Of course an old woman wouldn't be hanging out in the men's bath. That's silly. When I turned around, my consciousness drifted toward the bathhouse Fuji that reached all the way to the ceiling. This is the mount, Fuji Mount. I've heard the bathhouse Fuji, which was found in any old bathhouse nowadays, originated from Kakai Bathhouse. Fuji's healing waters and steam from the bath mixed together, making me feel like I was partaking in a purification ritual. It was a picturesque view no man could ever grow tired of seeing. When I happened to look over at the group of bathers to my side, they were turned away from the view of Mount Fuji, exchanging hushed whispers. I talked to my right ear to listen in for no reason in particular because I'm a nosy bit. See? Did you hear? What? About the giant of Jinbuchu. Giant? He's over six feet tall. That's not very tall. Another one butted in. He doesn't use an umbrella. And he wears a funny mask. As soon as I spotted him, he vanished. He's weird looking. Is he a monster? Or a ghost? I see, how interesting. Maybe it was a silent street performer for the new Kabuki show. Maybe some sort of prompt motion for a new motion picture. That earthquake earlier must have been from the giant's footsteps. Idiot. No, it had to be. He had a pretty active imagination, not gonna lie. Shonen yo. Huh? What? You will be my muse for my new story. I need to write by tomorrow. They fell silent after looking at each other a few times. They snorted. And then they showed me their cheeky, giggling faces. Baka. What? How dare you? They instantly cracked up hard enough to shake the bath. When I glanced around, everyone was staring at me with dead looks in their eyes. What? It was like I was the one being made a fool. Oi, wait. Ronan say. Soon who failed the university entrance exam is currently studying take again. How would you possibly know that? How do you know that? They distanced themselves from me in a train-like procession. Seriously? The press around here didn't know how to bathe. If they were innocent children, they would have wanted an adult to listen to them and would have gladly told their story. How dare they make fun of an adult and the insult of an ambitious title of Ronan say? An annoyed groan escaped from between my clenched teeth. Urgh. When I came to my senses and looked around, even more cold stares were focused on me. Not good. I sank. Oh my god, that's the same. Don't we have that same poster in our house? I sank down up to my nose in the top and hid myself as I made my way from corner to corner. Without co See, that is the same thing. What does it mean? I can't read Japanese, as you all well know. I mean, I'm learning though. I, I, in my spare time, I'm learning to uh, read Japanese. Without cooling off from my bath, I headed straight back and it my bachat. I can't make it even say it. How can I read it? Let me bachidu and promptly face my manuscript. I ignored the Frogman manuscript because that sucked. It's going to dive right into continuing the fandom in the basement, but as expected, I couldn't get the room right heard from those brats in Kikai Bathhouse out of my head. He doesn't use an umbrella, and he wears a funny mask. I figured it was a promotion for a show, but somehow it was spot on. Phantom in the basement would curl up his large body in the cell where he lived. Then, night after night, he would come up to the world on the surface and abduct someone on the verge of death. He had no interest in those trying to live. He would suddenly disappear when he'd been seen because he could sense that a person's life force. Just what were the Phantom in the basement's motives? Well, that's a long story, so I'll explain later. 
Haruhiko san. The moment I sensed the presence, my hallucination, Haruhiko san, was sitting right beside me. On her shoulder was the frogman who had shrunken down because his spiritual powers had been subdued. Something. What? Surprise. Oh, did you know? My hallucinations were talking to me now. I really must have been tired. I thought about keeping quiet and letting it pass, but he began to thoroughly read my manuscript. You gotta look like an idiot talking to ourselves. That is weird, right? How would they know? Hmm, ideas have physical forms. Look at light bulbs. Koko a nan no machida, Tamamoniku. Jimbo cho. Walking around on its own, if that was the case, did I get that idea from somewhere? Oh, maybe. Those last words Haruhiko sent suddenly disappeared. What was he thinking? I have no idea. My hallucinations were something born from my own subconscious, but up until now, I don't think I had a hallucination leave me with words I couldn't understand. Thinking about it was pointless. After all, I probably understood a subconscious. For the first time in my life, the idea of having a pen in my hand seemed awful, so I lay in my futon. I stretched out my hand to turn off the light, but I couldn't quite reach it. All I ended up doing was illuminating my hand. I eventually gave up and shut out the light with my own eyelids. Well, I think I'm going to call it here. If you like this, if you like the game, you like what you saw, you can pick up right now on Steam and MangaGamer.com. It has a 15% discount, so I think it's like 30 bucks roughly. Only $35, give or take. So yeah, I really like this. It has really great art. And the story actually seems pretty interesting, at least when I read the synopsis of it. So, I mean, obviously I didn't get too far, but you know, it's hard to show a lot of a story in a game like this that goes on for probably 30, 40 hours. But if you liked it, make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more. Have a good day, everybody, and take care.